Well, hello again, boys and girls. This is Mr. Wasserman, and today, once again, we are going to be looking at adding fractions, but this time, those fractions are going to be paired with some mixed numbers. We are in our home links, Unit 5, Lesson 4, and, uh, you know, before you get panicky about uh, the concept of adding mixed numbers and what do you do with all those different kinds of numbers, I want you to remember something. You've been exposed to mixed numbers pretty much all your life. And that, of course, is in the form of money. Whenever you see an amount of money that is a dollar and it has some cents to it, that's a mixed number. The dollar amount is your whole number and the cents is the fractional part. Okay? So let's say you are with your parents and uh, they get you one of those fancy hot chocolates and it costs $4.95. And you also want to get uh, one of those fancy scones. And let's say that fancy scone costs two and a quarter, so $2.25. How would you approach figuring out the total uh, for this addition problem? Because that's what this is. When I want a hot chocolate and a scone, I have to pay for both items. So what I would do is I would simply add the fractional parts first, the cents, and then I would add the whole dollar amounts. Okay? So since this is set up uh, in decimal format, it's pretty simple. I add the, the hundredths, 5 plus 5 is 10, or 5 cents plus 5 cents gives me 10 cents. I'm going to carry the dime, or the tenth. So 1 tenth plus 9 tenths plus 2 tenths gives me 12 tenths. And again, I have to carry the whole because when I have 12 dimes, that's the equivalent of $1 and 2 dimes or 12 dimes. Okay? So then I've carried my whole number amount, 1 plus 4 plus 2. That gives me a total of 7. So my total amount at Starbucks is $7.20. That's a pretty pricey snack right there, but oh so good. So when I look at this first story problem right here, uh, I'm not looking at decimals, I'm just looking at fractions, but I'm going to approach that problem in the same way. I'm going to break it down, do the fractional addition first, then add the whole numbers, and if there's any regrouping involved, I'll deal with it then. Okay, so let's read the problem. The art class has a box filled with balls of yarn. The students used six and two-thirds ball of yarn for a project. There are now two and two-thirds balls of yarn left in the box. How many balls of yarn did the art class start with? Okay. So again, I'm going to use the ruckus strategy to help me think this through. I'm going to reread it. I'm going to underline the question. I'm going to circle the important parts and come up with an action plan. Now, spoiler, my action plan is addition because that's the title of this uh, home link, so I can assume that I'm going to be adding some stuff. Okay, so let's reread. The art class had a box filled with balls of yarn. The students used six and two thirds balls of yarn for a project. There are now two and two thirds balls of yarn left in the box. How many balls of yarn did the art class start with? So, what's my whole or what's my unit? Because that's what this word means unit. What am I counting here? And what I'm counting is balls of yarn. Okay. So now I need a number model. So, well, I just have two uh, number amounts. One is six and two-thirds. And the other amount is two and two-thirds. And we'll say it equals y, y for yarn. Okay. So how do I approach this problem? Well, it's straight up addition, except I've got a couple different place values. And of course, whenever I see a, an addition problem that's written horizontally, like this one is, horizontally is side to side, I want to make that problem vertical, meaning I want it up and down so I can line up my place values. Because there are two place values here. There's the fractional part, which is the two-thirds, and the two-thirds. And then there's the whole uh, number amount, six and two. So I'm going to add six and two-thirds plus two and two-thirds to give me my total. 
So the first thing I need to do is I need to add my fractions. Now, if you recall from previous lessons, the first thing we have to do when we're adding fractions is that we just have to simply look to see are the denominators the same. If the denominators are the same, our lives are a lot easier. And they are. We're dealing with thirds here. So I can just ignore the, the bottom numbers for a hot second, or actually just write down that I am going to be dealing with thirds when I add these fractions together. So all I have to do really is look at the numerators. I'm adding the top numbers, 2 plus 2. Now what is 2 plus 2? Well, of course, that's 4. So I'll put that right down there. And then I'm going to add my whole numbers, 6 and 2. Well, of course, 6 and 2 gives me 8. So my answer is 8 and 4 thirds. Except it's not, because that is not a, a, a valid way to represent that amount. Okay. Now, you've heard of improper fractions before, okay? where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, and 4 thirds is an example of that. It is an improper fraction. Now, by itself, an improper fraction is fine, but when it's paired with a whole number, trying to make that a mixed number doesn't work because I now have enough fractional parts to have a whole a number amount along with other whole numbers, you know, kind of muddying up the whole thing. So what I need to do is some regrouping, okay? So let's look at this problem again. 6 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 2 thirds, okay? Let's pick a new color to differentiate. 6 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 2 thirds. Okay. Now, if I know that I'm, I'm adding thirds, and I don't have to worry about the denominator, I'm just thinking about the top number, right? So 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 is 1 more than 3. 4 is 1 more than 3. So if I'm thinking balls of yarn here, right? If I have 2 balls of yarn, and of course they wouldn't be split in this way, but this works for our purposes. Okay, and if I had two-thirds of a ball of yarn here, and then I had two-thirds of a ball of yarn here, and I tried to reorganize those partial balls of yarn into whole and, and fractional amounts, I could do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to make two new circles. That represents our ball of yarns. And then I'm going to shade in enough thirds to make a hole. One, two, three. And then I have a leftover third, right? So when I look at this amount, I see that I have one hole here, and then I have one third left over because. 4 is 1 more than 3. So, when I am adding 2 thirds plus 2 thirds together and I come up with the amount 4 thirds, I can regroup in my head by telling myself I can take 3 thirds out of that amount and convert it into one whole. And put that up there. And then I'm going to take my remainder fraction, 1 third, and put it right there. Okay? And then all I have to do is add my whole numbers together. 1 plus 6 gives me 7. 7 plus 2 gives me 9. So my new amount is 9 and 1 thirds. Now, if you can't do the mental math of adding fractions and converting them to whole numbers, you could have done the same process here. So looking at 4 thirds, you tell yourself, that's an improper fraction. So I have to change that improper fraction into a mixed number by making it into one and one third. And then I'm going to pair it with my eight holes. So when I think about eight and four thirds, I can just tell myself it's like I'm adding those two together. Okay? So if I add eight whole balls of yarn plus one and one thirds other balls of yarn, if I line them up vertically, eight plus one and one thirds, again I can see that I have no other thirds in my fractional amount, so I just bring that amount down. And then 8 plus 1 gives me 9. All of this 
to get to my answer that if they use six and two thirds balls of yarn for a project and there was two and two thirds balls of yarn left over, my grand total that I started with was nine and a third balls of yarn. Okay? So remember, friends, when you're adding mixed numbers, you have to start with the individual place values, and it's best to start from right to left, like we do in any other addition scenario, okay? And just like we do when we're adding amounts of money, we start with the cents, and then we move on to the dollars, okay? So you're going to start with the fractional parts, and then you're going to move on to the whole number parts, okay? There's an extra step involved there, but I am confident that you can do it. Okay, so when you get down to problems like this, uh, three through six, uh, you just have to, one, rewrite those problems so that they are vertical, so you can see the place values, and then you might be able to recognize that some of them will require you to do some regrouping, like number five, three and three-fourths plus two and three-fourths. When I write that problem out like this, three and three-fourths, and then two and three fourths. As soon as I see them side or up and down, I should say, I can see that three plus three is going to give me six. Six fourths is going to be an improper fraction, so I'm going to have to do some regrouping somehow. Okay, but I am positive that you will be able to do that yourself after my stellar example that I just shared with you. Okay. Then finally, down at the bottom of the practice section, there's some multiplication for you to practice. And we just got done with large digit multiplication in unit 4, so this should be a breeze. Let's look at 468 times 5, and I'm going to use partitioning rectangles for this one. 468 is 4 hundreds plus 6 tens, 60, plus 8. I'm going to multiply each of those numbers by 5. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 4 with two zeros behind it. 5 times 4 is 20. So I'm going to get 20 with one, two zeros behind it, otherwise known as 2,000. I'm going to multiply 5 times 6 tens, or 6 with a zero behind it. 5 times 6 is 30, so I'm going to get 30 with an extra zero behind it, or 300. And then, of course, 5 times 8 is 40. So I have to add together 2,340, and it practically adds itself. 2,340. Okay? Questions? If you do have some, you know who to ask. Your math teacher. And if I don't happen to be your math teacher, you need to reach out to your math teacher and say, Hey, I have questions. Please help. They will be happy to help you if they know you have questions. If you don't tell them you have questions, they're just going to assume you understand. And uh, don't let them assume that, especially if you are uh, confused or just need a little extra help. So ask the question. All right? Until we meet again, friends, good luck with your math homework. Have a good day. Thanks.